Hey, Charbax, welcome to the DLP suite and CES 2020. We're really excited for you to be here. Um, let me start out by saying, if you're not familiar with DLP uh, and you've gone to a movie theater, we create the image that you see on the screen. About eight out of 10 movie theaters use DLP technology. And we've taken that technology from chips like this and shrunk it down into chips like this. And so we're really excited to share some of these major, uh, major developments with you here What's today. What's the resolution on the small one like this? Uh, this is the world's smallest 1080p. Uh, so this is, we're going to show you uh, the first products that are on this part. Uh, this particular part can enable uh, products that are, are about that small, okay? So this is a full optical engine. It's full projector. It's got the DLP chipset. It also has uh, illumination and all the optics all in that form factor. So it's LED uh, light source in there? Yes, So the projector correct. can be that small? Correct. That's right. And so there's uh, some major things that we want to share with you is uh, 4K proliferation. We're starting to see that into mobile smart TV, laser TV applications. Uh, then we're going to share with you uh, the world's smallest uh, 1080p device. And then we're going to share with you some interactivity, the latest in interactivity with DLP. And then you're familiar with display on DLP, but you may not realize that DLP is actually used in the high-end industrial 3D printers. Uh, and we're going to show you a 3D printer that now hits under $1,000, first time ever on DLP. And then we're going to show you some futuristic things that are happening today in projection, which is using DLP to do scanning for 3D and then using DLP to display on those surfaces. So we'll take you through those now. This is short throw 4K? Yeah, this is a product from, uh, from Hisense. Uh, this is a, basically a 75-inch uh, laser TV. And then they also have 120 inches. They also have 88 inches uh, showing in their booth. Um, this uses DLP 4K plus direct RGB lasers. And, uh, and you're seeing this out from not just Hisense, but LG, XGIMI, Xiaomi, BenQ, Optima, and companies like AXA, and even other companies beyond that. But AXA is actually at $899. This product right here retails with the screen for $19.99. And uh, Hisense is making a big deal out of having three lasers. Correct. What's the advantage of having, uh, is like RGB lasers? Yeah, these are RGB lasers, uh, and, and they actually just give you a great color gamut. They also give you a great black level, and the contrast ratio, as you can see in the image quality, it's stunning. And uh, that, in conjunction with DLP, allows that image to look like that. And when they talk about larger ones, is uh, brighter and brighter. Uh, illumination maybe yes you get to to get to larger screen sizes uh, you can increase the brightness and get to larger screen sizes that's correct and even with the short throw technology is getting more and more affordable right yeah well as I mentioned this is at 1999 I think you'll see uh, even more aggressive price points from companies like AXA which are out at 899 today so uh, so wide variety of choices for everyone all right and here you're showing yeah. lots of Pico yeah we're gonna move over to the world's smallest uh, uh, 1080p products, and uh, this is Carlos Lopez, and he'll take you through that. Hey, hey guys, so here we're, we're showcasing a variety of really small products using DLP. This one is by XJimmy. It's called the Mogo Pro, and it's 1080p resolution. It's packed with two 3-watt hardened Carmen uh, uh, speakers for uh, really great audio. And then, of course, you can see the image here, 300 lumens. You have automatic keystone correction, automatic focus, and then of course it has built-in Android TV and uh, and the Google Assistant capability as well. Probably most of the space here is for the speakers, right? That's but this right. is actually using the point two. The uh, 1080p projection can get really, really small. So this is just the start of what you're start, gonna start seeing in the market. You could potentially see something that's just this big without a speaker? Oh, absolutely, even smaller than that. And uh, the, the, you see all the 1080p pixels on the screen, that's right, you see all 1920 by 1080 pixels on the screen with DLP. And with the gray colors, and how bright can it get? Well, right now, this product is at about 300 lumens. But depending on what type of uh, DLP chips that you use, you can go all the way up into even above 1,000 lumens using LED uh, illumination. And up here is a different one here. What, is, uh, what are we looking at here? This is. Uh... This one is also using a very small chip, and so if 
if, uh, if you want something more affordable than the 1080p, you can actually do, you can actually, uh, there's another option actually that XJimmy even has. It's called the MoGo, and it uses QHD resolution. Um, and you can even do HD resolution as well. And so now I want to go ahead and hand it off to an example of a product that's using DLP technology combined with interactivity. This is Amber, and she'll show you that. Hey. So this is the second generation product from Hachi. It incorporates a 10 point touch for interactivity combined with the Pico projector to get an interactive surface. It can be used on the countertop or turned around to project onto the wall and incorporates interactivity. It also has new features to enable more AI. And so um, they've developed applications for health and fitness, education, um, recipes, smart home, and that's um, some of the value in, in addition to the voice assistant to add more smart home features and connectivity to the home. And so they have great demonstrations of all these capabilities in their booth. They have a big booth here at CS. Yes. So this is getting a lot of traction, this interactive uh, yes. smart it's table. Multiple point touch. <laughs> and uh, this is also another short throw. So the, so you can have it down on the table or you can have it up on the wall? Right. Yeah, it gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of options for where you can put projectors in the home. All right. There's even some more examples up here. Yeah. These ones here. Um, right. So this is a, another compact 1080p product from Mirror. It's a 0.23 inch 1080p chip used for this product. And then we have an extremely compact product from ViewSonic um, that's a uh, doing our using our 0.2 wide VGA chip. That's a, that's not a, a full HD, right? Right, this is using wide VGA resolution. All right. And now we're going to hand it over to our our light control team to show you more. Thanks. Okay. So Charbax, uh, this is uh, Trevor Dowd. He's going to take you through 3D scanning and and the 3D printer that I mentioned under $1000 for the first time on DLP. So so DLP is enabling more affordable 3D printing. Yes, exactly. So DOP has long been established in the 3D scanning and 3D printing space in the higher end industrial applications. And this is the first time that uh, DLP Pico technology is being used to really bring those price points down to affordable levels. Uh, so this 3D scanner from Banano is able to achieve 200 micron level accuracy um, at a cost point below $1,000. At production volumes, it might be uh, somewhere around half that price. So what is it actually doing, and how, does DLP, how is DLP used for, that, for scanning? Uh, so the projector is sending out structured light okay. patterns. Is it this and this? Or yes. Yeah, so the, the projector is here, sending out structured light patterns onto the object, which is being captured by two cameras. And it's using uh, those two points of reference to create uh, 3D information to generate this point cloud here. Is this showing how it is inside the projector or is this a prototype right now? Or? Yeah, so this is an evaluation board to show what the inside of the projector is. And here I see a chip, it says DLP. So um, some uh, part of the DLP solution is about doing the chips, not just like the, the mirrors and stuff like that, right? Right, yes, so we sell a chipset, which is the DMD um, and then also a controller and sometimes a, a, a power management uh, chip as well. That calculates very fast what happens with the, the mirrors and all that stuff, right? The controlling yeah, so, it. So that's, that's uh, by the scanner. The scanner controls that. And, and in the final product, all of it will be contained uh, within this box. Nice. So that would be a very fast uh, scanning. Is it something that can be used in uh, like re uh, self-driving cars or something like that? Or is it a different market? Yeah, it, it, it depends uh, what, what your field of view is. You can design different systems, uh, but the technology is very robust to be used in a variety of applications. It's limited in terms of a range, right? You can't get like in the street far away, right? It's more for close by? Yeah, the, the range will be limited by the brightness of the projector. Um, so you can design brighter projectors to, to scan further. So how is DLP used for 3D printing? Is this in here? Yeah, so in stereolithography or SLA, you start with a liquid resin and you use light to cure that resin into a solid object. Um, and there's a, a wide range of things that you can 3D print, um, including some things that are impossible to, to manufacture, like inter interlocking um, items like this. And uh, 
like I said, DLP has been used in higher end industrial 3D printers for a long time. Um, but now we're taking that technology down to the consumer grade. This is the first sub $1,000 DLP 3D printer. Looks so printer. cool. This is one, sub $1,000? Yes. For the moonlight. Is it crowdfunding or people can buy it? Right now? Uh, so uh, this is a, a prototype. It'll be released in the coming months. Um, What's happening in there? Like it looks like some gl gluish uh, water. Uh... Yes, so it's it's starting with a, a liquid resin, um, and what you see is is the build stage. So objects print upside down, and um, as light exposes, it prints layer by layer, um, pulls it up and puts it back down, until you have uh, the full three D printed object. So DLP is going to have a huge role in the three D printing market. Yes, and already has. Yes, we, we already have a role in the in the higher end, uh, but as 3D printing is growing in the consumer space and the and the prosumer space, uh, DLP's role is going to grow with it. This looks like intricate and uh, it doesn't look like um, cheap 3D printing. It looks good, exactly. and all this can be done in the top 1,000. Yes, yes, we're bringing the the high resolution, the high speed, uh, and also the high reliability of DLP technology down to a uh, consumer level 3D printer. And this is a uh sturdy it doesn't break up and stuff it's like yes what people would expect it, exactly there's, there's a variety of materials that you can print with uh, from flexible materials that can be used um, in shoes um, or other objects to, to very strong materials all right it's cool to see DLP in many different things yes all right and, and, and Trevor may have not pointed out but this is about Five to, prints about five to ten times faster than existing technologies in the space right now. Really? So it's it's pretty exciting to see that quality at that speed with that reliability. How so. long time does it take to print one of these? Is it's not going to take like three days? No, no. It prints about uh, one centimeter per hour. Uh, so mm -hmm. an object like uh, this would take about three hours. Okay, so that's pretty fast for affordable three D printing. Yes. Is there any chance that this could do multi-material 3D printing somehow, or is it just going to be one by one at a time? Uh, yes. Yeah, so by changing the resin, you can change the material that you're printing with. Um, and there's there's a lot of research going into um, uh, the resin technology uh, on the materials side. Uh, so I think that we'll see a lot of exciting updates there. Like the mixing years. materials, and then having perhaps electronics in. That's different. That's a different. That's the next <laughs> yeah. stage, right? The, the, uh, right now, it doesn't. Uh, it does it, one at a time. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, Charbags, we're going to take you over here to uh, to uh, Brett with Lightform. He's going to show you some really cool uh, technology using DLP to scan and then display on surfaces. So, Brett. Hey there. Hi. So this is Lightform LF2. So it's a DLP uh, thousand lumen projector. So this is the LED projector. It's a smart projector with an Android ah. processor inside. And then on the front here, there's an RGB camera right there. Nice. And so through the projector and the camera, like what we just saw, we can do visible structured light. So here we've used visible structured light to get color and depth of the scene. And then we've used our content creation software. So here's the scan. Um, so we have those same black and white patterns that we just saw. Uh, and then once this completes, we'll have color and depth data. And then here we have that scan and we've used our software to create effects in real time. So these are generative or procedural effects that are using the color and the depth. And what that means is as a user, you're just dragging these effects onto an object. So you can create this content in about five seconds. So we're selling this product into hotels, restaurants, retail, location-based entertainment and events today. Is, so it's happening, it's, it's not just prototype, this is uh, mass production? This is, yeah, mass production. Um, this ships in about two months and then we have a separate product that has a computer and a camera that you can use on top of other DLP projectors. So over here you can see it on top of an Acer projector. So this is nice. the computer, this is the camera, turns any projector into a 3D scanner use our software for AR content playback. So right there we see um, an original old uh, Roman s sculpture, it could be, and then you make it come alive? Exactly, and so these effects are adapting to the 3D shape in real time. Um, and you can see there's a light source that's moving around the scene and it's doing some, some trippy colors and effects. You can also use this for practical information like text. So you can replace a printed sign or a TV with projected information. This is really awesome. It's gonna it's gonna change how uh, retail looks. Yes. And also museums could use this. We think all spaces and experiences will be impacted by this, bringing digital information into physical spaces in a magical way. Because uh, uh, the way museums like to um, 
be modern and stuff, they want to use a bunch of DLP projectors and they want to make the artworks come alive a little bit. Yes, and now it's cost affordable because this unit is a thousand. One thousand dollars. Yeah, ten eighty p. Yep, it's on uh, pre order for a thousand dollars right now. And then the compute solution to use with uh, any projector that's eight hundred right now. Um, and this just started shipping. Does it have exactly the same computer in there, or is this? No, different? it's different. This is a, a uh, Amlogic processor, um, and then this is an Intel Celeron. Does that mean you can do more with Intel, or you can do the same? The it is more powerful with the dedicated computer because obviously it's larger um, and it's a bit more expensive. Whereas the the thousand dollar all in one is more cost effective. What I wonder is uh, the the way I usually think of a um, DLP projector is that it projects the whole area, but it looks like it's only projecting on the t-shirt and there's nothing projected outside of it? Exactly. So uh, this is just the black level that you're seeing here. So it's you know, ah, just, just black like level. about that large yeah. image. Uh, and we use our tool to quickly select the shirt from the background um, using the depth data to then so only put the content on the shirt. The black level is really good on a, on a DLP projector, right? Is yeah. That, yeah. Because that's why basically you don't see it. Yep. It's basically imperceptible in this lighting. And it doesn't like... Um, brighten up dark areas that, that shouldn't be brightened up. Yep. All right. That's awesome. So is it crowdfunding or not? Or where, where do people pre-order them? Uh, on lightform.com. Um, so really? you can order directly from there. Cool. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right, Charbeck. So uh, thanks again for coming. We really appreciate it. You've seen a wide variety of applications, 3D scan, you've seen display, you've seen 3D print, all on DLP. And if you go out to the show floor, you're going to see applications like pinball, you're going to see appliances, you're going to see smart displays, mobile displays. Uh, so we're really excited about all of that. Excited to have you here. If you're looking for more information on DLP, it's ti.com slash DLP. You can get a whole a wide variety of information there. And we look forward to seeing you again at CES 2021.